In our fast-paced lives filled with countless interactions and challenges, have you ever noticed how some people effortlessly command respect and attention? What if the secret to such influence lies not just in our actions, but in the profound teachings of Islam? Imagine a life where your presence is valued and your words are respected in every conversation. Today, we're delving into the timeless wisdom of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to uncover 10 transformative strategies that will elevate your social standing, enrich your personal relationships, and position you as a leader in every area of life. Whether you're in a boardroom, at a community gathering, or in the comfort of your home, these strategies promise to bring you the respect and recognition you deserve. Shakti 1. Value your worth The concept of valuing your worth is deeply rooted in Islamic teachings and reflects a profound understanding of self-awareness and self-appreciation. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, conveyed a powerful message about self-worth when he said, Your value is what you know and do best. This statement emphasizes the significance of recognizing and embracing the unique talents and abilities bestowed upon each individual by Allah. It is not just about acknowledging one's skills, but also understanding that these gifts are a trust from Allah, meant to be nurtured, developed, and used for the greater good. To truly value your worth, you must first embark on a journey of self-discovery. This involves taking the time to introspect and identify your unique talents, passions, and strengths. Perhaps you excel in problem solving, have an artistic flair, or possess a natural talent for empathy and helping others. Recognizing these traits is the first step in valuing yourself. It is important to understand that these skills are not accidents or coincidences, but are divinely endowed to help you fulfill your purpose in life. Once you have identified your strengths, the next step is to develop them with confidence and dedication. This means continually learning and improving, seeking knowledge, and honing your skills. In Islam, the pursuit of knowledge is highly valued, as evidenced by the Prophet's, peace be upon him, encouragement to seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. This lifelong commitment to personal growth ensures that you are always striving to be the best version of yourself, which in turn enhances your self-worth. Moreover, Valuing your worth is about self-respect and self-acceptance. It involves recognizing that you have intrinsic value beyond what society or external validation may suggest. You are valuable because you are a creation of Allah with a unique purpose and potential. This understanding fosters a sense of self-respect and dignity, which is crucial in commanding respect from others. When you know your worth, you carry yourself with confidence and self-assurance which naturally draws respect and admiration from those around you. Valuing your worth also means setting boundaries and not allowing others to undervalue or disrespect you. It requires a strong sense of self-awareness and the ability to assert yourself in situations where your worth may be challenged. This could involve speaking up for yourself in professional settings, ensuring that your contributions are recognized, or in personal relationships where it's essential to ensure that you are treated with the respect you deserve. In a broader sense, valuing your worth extends to how you interact with your community and society. It is about using your unique skills and talents to contribute positively, whether by volunteering, mentoring, or simply being a supportive friend or family member. By actively participating in your community and sharing your gifts, you not only enhance your own sense of self-worth, but also inspire others to recognize and value their unique contributions. Ultimately, valuing your worth is a holistic practice that encompasses self-awareness, continuous personal development, self-respect, and positive contribution to society. It is a principle that, when embraced fully, enriches your life and the lives of those around you, fostering a community where everyone is valued and respected for their unique gifts and contributions. 2. Balance your availability. The concept of balancing availability is an essential principle in Islam, deeply rooted in the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He emphasized the importance of maintaining a balance in all aspects of life, advising, 
Give time to your family, but reserve moments for yourself as well. This wisdom speaks to the need for equilibrium between fulfilling one's duties to others and taking care of one's own needs. It is a reminder that while being available and present for others is a noble act, it is equally important to ensure that one's own well-being is not neglected in the process. Balancing availability begins with understanding the importance of self-care. In Islam, taking care of one's body, mind, and soul is not only a personal responsibility, but a duty to Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, emphasize the need for rest, reflection, and spiritual rejuvenation. Without taking time for yourself, it is easy to become overwhelmed, leading to burnout, fatigue, and a diminished capacity to help others. By setting aside time for personal reflection, prayer, and relaxation, you recharge your energy and maintain a healthy balance that allows you to be more effective in your interactions with others. Balancing your availability means being mindful of your commitments and learning to say no when necessary. It involves setting clear boundaries about how much time and energy you can realistically give without compromising your well-being. This is especially important in today's fast-paced world, where there is constant pressure to be available and accessible at all times. By establishing these boundaries, you communicate to others that while you are willing to help and support, your time and energy are also valuable and need to be respected. Balancing availability is about prioritizing your responsibilities. It involves recognizing that while helping others is important, it is also crucial to ensure that you are fulfilling your personal, familial, and spiritual obligations. This means making time for prayer, family, and personal development alongside your commitments to others. By prioritizing these responsibilities, you create a balanced life that is both fulfilling and sustainable. The Prophet's peace be upon him, advice to balance availability also highlights the importance of quality over quantity in your interactions with others. It is not about how much time you spend with someone, but the quality of that time. When you are present, be fully engaged and attentive, offering your undivided attention and support. This mindful approach ensures that your interactions are meaningful and impactful, fostering deeper connections and more fulfilling relationships. Balancing availability involves recognizing the value of solitude and reflection. In Islam, solitude is seen as a time for personal growth, introspection, and spiritual connection. The Prophet, peace be upon him, himself would often retreat to the cave of Hira for contemplation and prayer. This practice of taking time for oneself is essential for maintaining a healthy balance and ensuring that one's actions and decisions are aligned with Islamic principles and values. In a broader sense, balancing availability also has a positive impact on your community and relationships. When you are well-rested and balanced, you are more patient, compassionate, and understanding in your interactions with others. This creates a positive ripple effect fostering an environment of mutual respect and support. It also sets a positive example for others, encouraging them to also prioritize their well-being and maintain a healthy balance in their lives. Balancing availability is about creating a harmonious life that allows you to fulfill your duties to others while also taking care of yourself. It is a practice that requires mindfulness, self-awareness, and the ability to set boundaries and prioritize responsibilities. By embracing this principle, you ensure that you remain effective, fulfilled, and respected in all areas of your life. Three, preserve modesty. Preserving modesty is a fundamental principle in Islam, deeply embedded in the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He emphasized the virtue of modesty stating, modesty is part of faith, and faith leads to paradise. This profound teaching underscores the importance of modest behavior in all aspects of life, from how we dress and speak to how we interact with others. Modesty, in the Islamic context, is not just about outward appearances, but is a holistic approach that encompasses both external conduct and internal humility. To preserve modesty, one must first understand that modesty is a reflection of one's inner state. 
It is about having a humble heart, recognizing that everything one possesses, including talents, beauty, and wealth, is a gift from Allah. This understanding fosters a sense of gratitude and humility, which naturally translates into modest behavior. Modesty is about acknowledging your worth without arrogance and recognizing the worth of others without envy. It is about conducting oneself with dignity, respect, and humility, regardless of the circumstances. Modesty in dress is one of the most visible aspects of modest behavior, but it is important to understand that modesty in Islam goes beyond clothing. It is about dressing in a way that is respectful to oneself and others, avoiding extravagance and ostentation. The Prophet, peace be upon him, encouraged simple and modest clothing, emphasizing that the purpose of dress is to cover and to be presentable, not to seek attention or admiration. By choosing modest clothing, one reflects a respect for oneself and a desire to be judged by one's character rather than appearance. In addition to modesty in dress, modesty in speech and behavior is equally important. The Prophet, peace be upon him, taught that a Muslim should speak only good or remain silent. This teaching encourages mindful speech, avoiding gossip, slander, and harsh words. It also emphasizes the importance of speaking with kindness, respect, and humility, considering the impact of one's words on others. By choosing to speak thoughtfully and respectfully, you demonstrate self-control and empathy, qualities that naturally command respect from others. Modesty in behavior extends to how we interact with others, including gestures, posture, and body language. It is about being aware of how you present yourself and ensuring that your actions are respectful and considerate. This could involve simple acts such as lowering your gaze, giving others the space to speak, or being mindful of your tone and volume in conversations. By acting with modesty, you create a positive impression and foster an environment of respect and dignity. Modesty is about humility and recognizing that all achievements and successes are by the grace of Allah. It involves acknowledging one's limitations and being open to learning and growth. This humility fosters a sense of openness and receptivity, allowing one to build stronger, more meaningful relationships based on mutual respect and understanding. By being modest, you show that you value others' opinions and contributions, creating a collaborative and inclusive environment. Modesty also plays a crucial role in maintaining personal integrity and respect. It is about being true to your values and principles, regardless of external pressures or societal expectations. This could mean standing firm in your beliefs, even when it is difficult or unpopular, or choosing to act with integrity, even when no one is watching. By preserving modesty, you demonstrate a commitment to living a life of integrity and authenticity, which naturally earns the respect and admiration of others. In a broader sense, preserving modesty contributes to a more respectful and harmonious society. When individuals prioritize modesty in their actions and interactions, it creates an environment where everyone feels valued and respected for who they are, rather than what they have or how they look. This fosters a sense of community and belonging, where people are judged by their character and actions rather than superficial attributes. Preserving modesty also has spiritual benefits. It aligns your actions with the teachings of Islam and brings you closer to Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, taught that modesty is a shield against sin and a means of drawing closer to Allah. By choosing to live modestly, you protect yourself from the negative influences of pride, arrogance, and vanity, which can lead to spiritual downfall. Instead, you cultivate a heart that is humble, grateful, and content, qualities that are pleasing to Allah and lead to spiritual fulfillment. Preserving modesty is a comprehensive practice that encompasses dress, speech, behavior, and attitude. It is about living with humility, respect, and dignity, recognizing that everything one has is a gift from Allah. By embracing modesty in all aspects of life, you create a positive impact on yourself and those around you, fostering a community of respect, integrity, and harmony. Burry. 
encourage mutual contribution. Encouraging mutual contribution is a principle deeply embedded in the teachings of Islam, emphasizing the importance of cooperation, generosity, and collective responsibility. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught, the hand that gives is better than the hand that takes. Be helpers of one another. This profound statement encourages a spirit of giving and receiving within a community, highlighting that both actions are essential for a balanced and harmonious society. Mutual contribution begins with the recognition that we are all interconnected and interdependent. In a community or any form of relationship, everyone has a role to play, and each role is valuable. By contributing to the well-being of others, you not only fulfill your social responsibilities, but also create an environment where everyone feels included, valued, and motivated to give back. This reciprocal approach fosters a sense of belonging and solidarity, which is crucial for building strong, resilient communities. The concept of mutual contribution also aligns with the Islamic idea of Ummah, which refers to the global community of Muslims. Within the Ummah, there is an expectation that members support each other, not just in times of crisis, but in everyday life. This support can take many forms, from financial assistance to emotional support, sharing knowledge, or simply being present for one another. By actively participating in this network of mutual support, you contribute to the strength and unity of the community, reflecting the prophets, peace be upon him, teachings about the importance of compassion and cooperation. Encouraging mutual contribution goes beyond simply giving material support. It also involves creating an environment where everyone feels encouraged and empowered to contribute their unique talents and resources. This can be achieved by recognizing and appreciating the diverse skills and abilities that each person brings to the table. When people feel that their contributions are valued, they are more likely to participate actively and share their gifts with others. This not only strengthens the community, but also enhances individual self-esteem and satisfaction. Moreover, encouraging mutual contribution requires fostering an attitude of generosity and selflessness. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, exemplified this through his own actions, consistently placing the needs of others above his own. This spirit of generosity is not limited to material wealth, but extends to time, knowledge, and compassion. By giving freely and without expectation of return, you embody the teachings of Islam and create a culture of giving that benefits everyone. An important aspect of mutual contribution is understanding that giving and receiving are two sides of the same coin. While it is noble to give, it is equally important to be open to receiving help when needed. This humility in accepting assistance allows others the opportunity to contribute and fulfills the communal obligation of supporting one another. By embracing both roles, you create a balanced dynamic where everyone feels valued and supported. Encouraging mutual contribution also involves promoting fairness and equity within the community. It means ensuring that resources, opportunities, and support are distributed justly, so no one feels marginalized or left out. This requires a conscious effort to identify and address any barriers that may prevent individuals from contributing or receiving help. By promoting inclusivity and fairness, you foster a community where everyone can thrive and contribute to the collective good. Mutual contribution has a profound impact on personal growth and development. When you actively engage in giving and receiving, you develop empathy, patience, and a deeper understanding of the needs and experiences of others. These qualities not only enhance your interpersonal relationships, but also contribute to your spiritual growth, bringing you closer to Allah. Encouraging mutual contribution is about fostering a culture of generosity, cooperation, and shared responsibility. It involves recognizing the interconnectedness of all members of a community and creating an environment where everyone feels valued and motivated to contribute. By embracing this principle, you help build stronger, more resilient communities that reflect the compassionate and inclusive teachings of Islam. Five, prioritize your needs. 
Prioritizing your needs is a vital concept in Islam that underscores the importance of self-care and personal well-being. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, highlighted this principle with his advice, take advantage of the healthy moments before the sickly. This teaching emphasizes the need to care for oneself to maintain a balanced, fulfilling life and be more effective in serving others and fulfilling one's responsibilities. To prioritize your needs, you must first recognize that self-care is not selfish, but a fundamental duty in Islam. The body and mind are trusts from Allah, and you are responsible for taking care of them. This responsibility includes ensuring that you get enough rest, eat healthily, exercise, and manage stress. By maintaining your physical and mental health, you honor the trust Allah has placed in you and position yourself to contribute more effectively to your family, community, and society. Prioritizing your needs also means setting boundaries and learning to say no when necessary. In today's world, there is often pressure to be constantly available and to meet the demands of work, family, and social obligations. However, saying yes to everything can lead to burnout and exhaustion, which ultimately reduces your ability to serve others effectively. By setting clear boundaries and prioritizing your well-being, you ensure that you have the energy and focus to fulfill your responsibilities to the best of your ability. Prioritizing your needs involves recognizing the importance of spiritual nourishment. Just as the body requires food and rest, the soul needs spiritual sustenance through prayer, reflection, and connection with Allah. Making time for daily prayers, reading the Quran, and engaging in other forms of worship is crucial for maintaining spiritual health. This spiritual practice provides a sense of peace, purpose, and direction, enabling you to navigate life's challenges with resilience and grace. Moreover, prioritizing your needs means acknowledging your emotional and psychological well-being. It involves taking time for introspection and self-reflection, understanding your emotions, and addressing any issues that may be affecting your mental health. This could include seeking support from trusted friends, family members, or professionals when needed. By taking care of your emotional well-being, you ensure that you are better equipped to handle stress, make sound decisions, and maintain healthy relationships. The principle of prioritizing your needs also extends to personal growth and self-development. Islam encourages continuous learning and self-improvement, as evidenced by the Prophet's peace be upon him, emphasis on seeking knowledge from the cradle to the grave. By investing time in learning new skills, pursuing hobbies, and engaging in activities that bring joy and fulfillment, you not only enhance your capabilities, but also contribute to your overall happiness and satisfaction in life. In a broader sense, prioritizing your needs is about finding balance in all areas of life. It means managing your time and energy wisely to ensure that you can meet your personal, familial, and social responsibilities without neglecting your own needs. This balance is essential for maintaining a healthy, productive, and fulfilling life that aligns with Islamic values. Finally, prioritizing your needs sets a positive example for others. By taking care of yourself and setting healthy boundaries, you demonstrate self-respect and self-awareness, encouraging others to do the same. This not only fosters a culture of well-being and self-care within your community, but also promotes a more compassionate and supportive environment where everyone can thrive. Prioritizing your needs is a holistic practice that encompasses physical, spiritual, emotional, and intellectual well-being. It is about taking care of yourself to serve others better and fulfill your responsibilities with energy and focus. By embracing this principle, you honor the trust Allah has placed in you and create a balanced, fulfilling life that reflects the teachings of Islam. 6. Keep Allah at the Center Keeping Allah at the center of your life is a fundamental principle in Islam, emphasizing the importance of maintaining a strong spiritual connection with your Creator. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, consistently taught the importance of faith in guiding one's actions and decisions, reminding us, keep your Creator in your thoughts, and everything else will fall into place. This guidance underscores the role of spirituality in shaping a life of integrity, purpose, and fulfillment. 
To keep Allah at the center of your life, it is essential to develop a deep personal relationship with Him. This begins with recognizing Allah's presence in every aspect of your life and acknowledging that everything you have and everything you are is by His will. This awareness fosters a sense of humility and gratitude, which is crucial for maintaining a strong spiritual connection. By constantly reminding yourself of Allah's presence and seeking His guidance in all matters, you align your actions and decisions with Islamic principles, ensuring that your life is lived in accordance with His will. Maintaining a strong connection with Allah also involves regular worship and devotion. This includes performing the five daily prayers, reading the Quran, making dua, supplication, and engaging in other forms of worship, such as fasting and charity. These acts of worship serve as a constant reminder of Allah's presence and help to keep your heart and mind focused on Him. By making worship a central part of your daily routine, you ensure that your actions are guided by faith and that your life reflects the teachings of Islam. Moreover, keeping Allah at the center of your life requires mindfulness and self-reflection. It involves regularly assessing your actions, intentions, and priorities to ensure that they align with Islamic values. This could mean taking time each day to reflect on your behavior, seeking forgiveness for any mistakes, and making a conscious effort to improve. By being mindful of your actions and continuously striving to align them with the teachings of Islam, you strengthen your connection with Allah and ensure that your life is lived in accordance with His guidance. Keeping Allah at the center means seeking His guidance in all aspects of your life, from personal decisions to professional endeavors. This involves making istikhara, prayer for guidance, when faced with important decisions, seeking advice from knowledgeable and pious individuals, and trusting in Allah's wisdom and plan. By relying on Allah for guidance, you demonstrate your trust and faith in Him, which strengthens your spiritual connection and brings peace and clarity to your life. Another important aspect of keeping Allah at the center of your life is practicing gratitude. The Prophet, peace be upon him, taught that gratitude is a fundamental aspect of faith, and it is through gratitude that you recognize and appreciate Allah's blessings in your life. By regularly expressing gratitude for all that you have, you cultivate a positive mindset and a deeper appreciation for Allah's mercy and generosity. This gratitude not only enhances your spiritual connection, but also fosters a sense of contentment and fulfillment in your daily life. Keeping Allah at the center also involves being mindful of your intentions. In Islam, actions are judged by intentions, and it is crucial to ensure that your intentions are sincere and aligned with the teachings of Islam. This means doing things for the sake of Allah rather than seeking worldly recognition or reward. By purifying your intentions and focusing on pleasing Allah, you ensure that your actions are meaningful and spiritually fulfilling. In a broader sense, keeping Allah at the center of your life means making your faith the foundation of your relationships, interactions, and decisions. It involves treating others with kindness, compassion, and respect as these are qualities that are pleasing to Allah. It also means being honest, just, and fair in all your dealings, reflecting the ethical and moral conduct encouraged by Islam. By making faith the cornerstone of your life, you create a harmonious and purposeful existence that is pleasing to Allah and beneficial to those around you. Keeping Allah at the center of your life is about maintaining a strong spiritual connection with your Creator and ensuring that your actions and decisions reflect Islamic values. It involves regular worship, mindfulness, gratitude, and sincerity, as well as a commitment to living a life of integrity and purpose. By embracing this principle, you draw closer to Allah and create a life that is spiritually fulfilling, balanced, and harmonious. Kain 7. Communicate thoughtfully. Thoughtful communication is a cornerstone of effective relationships and a key principle in Islam, as taught by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He emphasized the profound impact of mindful communication, stating, The believer speaks with wisdom and listens with intent. This teaching highlights the importance of choosing words carefully and being an attentive listener, 
fostering an environment of respect, understanding, and empathy. To communicate thoughtfully, it is essential to first recognize the power of words. In Islam, words are seen as a reflection of one's inner state and can have a profound impact on others. The Prophet, peace be upon him, taught that a Muslim should speak only good or remain silent. This wisdom encourages mindfulness in speech, ensuring that words are chosen with care and consideration. By speaking thoughtfully, you avoid causing harm or misunderstanding and instead foster positive, constructive interactions. Thoughtful communication also involves active listening, which is the practice of fully engaging with and understanding what others are saying. This means listening without interrupting, judging, or preparing a response. By giving others your full attention, you show respect for their thoughts and feelings, which helps build trust and rapport. Active listening also allows you to gain a deeper understanding of the other person's perspective, leading to more meaningful and productive conversations. In addition to mindful speech and active listening, thoughtful communication requires empathy and compassion. It involves considering the feelings and needs of others before speaking and choosing words that are kind, respectful, and supportive. This empathetic approach helps to create a safe and inclusive environment where everyone feels heard and valued. By communicating with empathy, you foster a sense of connection and understanding, which strengthens relationships and promotes mutual respect. Moreover, thoughtful communication involves being clear and concise in your expression. This means avoiding ambiguity or unnecessary complexity, which can lead to confusion and misunderstanding. By expressing yourself clearly and directly, you ensure that your message is understood and that your intentions are transparent. This clarity is especially important in situations where miscommunication could have serious consequences, such as in professional settings or during conflict resolution. Another important aspect of thoughtful communication is being mindful of nonverbal cues. Body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice all play a significant role in how messages are received and interpreted. By being aware of your nonverbal signals and ensuring that they align with your words, you create a more cohesive and effective communication style. This alignment between verbal and nonverbal communication fosters trust and credibility, making your interactions more impactful and meaningful. Thoughtful communication also involves practicing patience and restraint, especially in emotionally charged situations. The Prophet, peace be upon him, often reminded his followers of the value of patience and self-control, particularly when dealing with anger or frustration. By taking a moment to pause and reflect before responding, you avoid reacting impulsively and instead choose a more measured and thoughtful response. This practice not only prevents unnecessary conflict, but also demonstrates maturity and emotional intelligence. In a broader sense, thoughtful communication is about fostering a culture of respect and inclusivity. It involves creating an environment where everyone feels comfortable expressing themselves and where diverse perspectives are valued. This inclusive approach encourages open dialogue and collaboration, leading to more innovative and effective solutions. By promoting thoughtful communication, you contribute to a more positive and productive community where everyone feels empowered to share their ideas and opinions. Finally, thoughtful communication reflects your personal and spiritual growth. It demonstrates your commitment to living by Islamic principles, such as kindness, humility, and sincerity. By communicating thoughtfully, you embody the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and create interactions that are not only effective, but also spiritually rewarding. This alignment between your communication style and your faith strengthens your connection with Allah and enhances your overall well-being. Thoughtful communication is a holistic practice that involves mindful speech, active listening, empathy, clarity, patience, and inclusivity. It is about choosing words that are kind and respectful, listening with intent, and fostering an environment of mutual understanding and respect. By embracing this principle, you create meaningful and impactful interactions that reflect the teachings of Islam 
and contribute to your personal and spiritual growth. 8. Seek personal fulfillment. The Prophet, peace be upon him, encouraged continuous personal growth and development, famously stating, Seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. This directive underscores the significance of lifelong learning and personal fulfillment, which are integral to living a balanced and enriched life. Seeking personal fulfillment involves pursuing activities that nourish your soul, expand your mind, and enhance your physical well-being. Engaging in hobbies, advancing your education, and deepening your spiritual practices are all ways to seek personal fulfillment. These endeavors not only improve your skills and knowledge, but also provide a sense of achievement and satisfaction. When you dedicate time to cultivating your interests and passions, you become more content and resilient, qualities essential for handling life's challenges. Now, nine, maintain self-respect. The prophet, peace be upon him, emphasized the importance of dignity and self-respect when he stated, respect yourself and others will respect you. This profound advice serves as a cornerstone for personal conduct in Islam, advocating for an inward sense of self-esteem that manifests outwardly in our interactions and behaviors. Maintaining self-respect involves holding oneself to high moral and ethical standards and acting in ways that consistently reflect these values. Self-respect is not merely about how we perceive ourselves, but also about how we require others to treat us. It sets the foundation for boundaries in personal and professional relationships, ensuring that we do not accept less than we deserve. This respect for oneself is crucial in preventing exploitation and mistreatment, fostering relationships grounded in mutual respect and equality. 10. Foster genuine connections. The Prophet, peace be upon him, often emphasized the importance of building strong, genuine relationships saying, the believer does not harbor hate. This teaches us the value of nurturing positive, authentic connections with those around us, reflecting a key principle in Islam about mutual respect and compassion in relationships. Fostering genuine connections involves more than superficial interactions. It requires a deep commitment to understanding, supporting, and valuing others. Creating these connections means actively listening to others, showing empathy, and being present in your interactions. It's about engaging with people without preconceived judgments or biases, allowing relationships to be built on trust and mutual respect. This foundation encourages open communication and sincere interactions, which are essential for lasting relationships. By integrating these teachings into your daily life, You'll not only gain respect and priority, but also bring yourself closer to the noble qualities exemplified by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Thank you for watching, and remember to reflect these teachings in your life. Peace be upon you.